How to Hug a Porcupine? Easy Ways to Love the Difficult People. It's a book written by Dr. John. This book focuses on building and maintaining healthy relationships, especially with people who may be challenging or difficult to deal with. The book provides practical advice on how to approach and manage interaction with difficult individuals, whether they are family members, co-workers, or friends. Number two, setting boundaries. The author emphasizes the importance of setting healthy boundaries to protect oneself while still being compassionate and empathic towards others. Number three, communication strategies. The book offers various communication techniques to diffuse tension, avoid misunderstandings, and express oneself clearly without escalating conflicts. Number four, emotional self-care. The author discusses the significance of taking care of one's emotional health, especially when dealing with toxic or draining relationships. Number five, practical tools. Throughout the book, the author provides actionable tips and exercises to help readers implement the advice in their daily lives. Now, I will explain all the five points. So number one, understanding difficult people. So there are five points for this difficult people that how to handle them. Number one, root causes of difficult behavior. The author explains that difficult behaviors often stem from deep-seated insecurities, fears, past traumas, or unmet needs. These factors can cause individuals to react defensively, aggressively, or irrationally, making them challenging to interact with. Number two, empathy and perspective taking. The author emphasizes the importance of trying to see things from the difficult person's perspective. By understanding their background and what might be triggering their behavior, it's easier to approach them with empathy rather than frustration. Number three, defense mechanisms. Difficult people may employ various defense mechanisms such as denial, projection, or blame shifting to protect themselves emotionally. Recognizing these mechanisms can help you respond in a way that does not exacerbate the situation. Number four, the impact of past experiences. The author discusses how past experiences, particularly negative ones, can shape a person's behavior. For instance, Someone who has been hurt in the past might become overly critical or distant to protect themselves from further pain. Number five, managing expectations. Understanding that difficult people might not change their behavior quickly or at all is crucial. The author advises managing your expectations and focusing on what you can control, your own reactions and boundaries. Number two points, setting boundaries. So there are seven ways to set up boundaries. Number one, understanding the need for boundaries. The author explains that boundaries are necessary to define what behaviors are acceptable and what are not. Without clear boundaries, difficult people may overstep leading to feelings of resentment, frustration, or burnout on your part. Number two, types of boundaries. The book outlines different types of boundaries, including emotional, physical, and mental. Emotional boundaries involve protecting your feelings and mental health, while physical boundaries related to personal space. Mental boundaries concern your thoughts and beliefs, ensuring that you don't allow others to impose their views or negativity onto you. Number three, communicating boundaries clearly. Setting boundaries involves clearly 
and assertively communicating your limits to the other person. The author advises using I statements to express your needs and to avoid sounding accusatory. For example, saying I need some time alone to recharge is more effective than saying you are overwhelming me. Number four, being consistent. Once boundaries are set, it is crucial to be consistent in enforcing them. The author emphasizes that wavering or allowing exceptions can confuse the other person and undermine the boundaries you have established. Consistency reinforces the importance of your limits and helps the other person understand that they are non-negotiable. Number five, dealing with pushback. Difficult people may resist or push back against the boundaries you set. The author provides strategies for handling this pushback calmly and firmly. Number six, self-respect and self-care. Setting boundaries is a form of self-respect and self-care. The book highlights that protecting your well-being should be a priority. And setting boundaries is an essential part of maintaining your mental and emotional health when dealing with difficult people. Number seven, balancing compassion and firmness. While it is important to be compassionate and understanding, the author stresses that this should not become at the cost of your own well-being. Balance. Boundaries allow you to be kind and empathetic without sacrificing your peace of mind. Now the third main point of this book is communication strategies. And there are nine communication strategies. Number one, active listening. The author emphasizes the importance of true listening to what the other person is saying. Active listening involves giving your full attention. This helps the other person feel heard and respected, which can reduce defensiveness. Number two, using I statement. One of the key communication strategies discussed is the use of I statement instead of you statements. I statement focused on expressing your own feelings and needs without blaming or accusing the other person. For example, saying I feel hurt when my efforts are not acknowledged is more effective and less confrontational than saying you never appreciate what I do. Number three, managing tone and body language. The author points out that how you say something is often as important as what you say. Maintaining a calm, respectful tone and open body language can prevent a conversation from escalating into an argument. Number four, avoiding triggers. The book advises being aware of and avoiding topics or phrases that might trigger a defensive or aggressive response in the difficult person. Understanding their sensitivities can help you navigate conversations more smoothly and avoid unnecessary conflicts. Fifth, setting the stage for positive interaction. The author suggests choosing the right time and place for difficult conversation, ensuring that both parties are in a relatively calm and neutral environment can make it easier to have a productive dialogue without distractions or external stresses. Number six, staying calm and composed. When dealing with a difficult person, it is easy to get emotionally charged. The author recommends staying calm, composed and focus on the issue at hand, rather than getting caught up in emotions. Taking deep breaths or pausing before responding can help maintain control over the conversation. Number seven, clarifying and confirming. Miscommunication can often lead to misunderstandings. So it's important to clarify and confirm what has been said during the conversation. 
asking questions like did i understand you correctly or can you explain what you mean by that helps ensure both parties are on the same page number 8 agree to disagree sometimes despite your best efforts you and the difficult person may reach an agreement the author advises recognizing when it is best to agree to disagree and to move on from the conversation without holding on to resentment or frustration fourth point of the book emotional self care so there are certain points for emotional self care number 1 recognizing your limits the author encourages you to be aware of your emotional limits and to recognize when you are feeling overwhelmed stressed or drained number 2 prioritize your well being the book stresses the importance of making your emotional health a priority this means ensuring that you take time for yourself engage in activities that bring you joy and avoid situations or interactions that excessively drain your energy practicing mindfulness number 4 setting and enforcing boundaries number 5 engaging in positive self talk number 6 seeking support number 7 taking time to recharge number 8 letting go of what you can't control number 9 forgiveness and compassion and the last part of the book is practical tools which is the fifth part and here are some of the tools number 1 creating emotional distance one practical tool the author discusses is the ability to create emotional distance between yourself and the difficult person this does not mean cutting them off completely but rather learning how to detach emotionally from their negative behaviors number 2 the use of time outs when a situation becomes too intense or emotionally charged the author suggests taking a time out this involves stepping away from the conversation number 3 implementing the broken record technique This tool involves calmly and consistently repeating your point or boundary when faced with resistance or manipulation. For example, if someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to do, you can calmly repeat, "I have made my decision and I'm sticking to it," without getting drawn into further arguments. Number 5, using positive reinforcement Another practical tool is positive reinforcement where you acknowledge and reward any positive behavior or effort made by the difficult person. This encourages them to continue those behaviors creating a more positive interaction dynamic. Number 6 mindful communication. The author stresses the importance of mindful communication which involves being fully present and intentional in your, in your interactions. Number 7 the art of disengagement Sometimes the best tool is knowing when to disengage from a conversation or situation 